for the Audio Line Show. Joining us now, Fox Sports One TV personality. They're getting off, uh, off the ground there. <laughs> Two-time Super Bowl uh, champion. Godly, this is going to be terrible. Trevor Price. <laughs> this is going to be terrible. No, you know, when you do my show, Trevor, I don't cut you out later. <laughs> uh, oh, is we going to go there? Man, I, got was, up early. CBS. I got up early. I got down to this big show there in New Orleans, and everything I do just gets cut out because I made fun of the show The Talk. Because <laughs> Les Moonvies' Moon annoying wife is on it. <laughs> I'm, you know what? I don't work for CBS I anymore. I know. Well, so. Dude, you're at Fox, but those be exciting over there, right? It is. Yeah, it it is. looks like it fun. Is. It is fun. You fit in perfect there, man. Oh, are you trying to tell me I'm not a serious guy? I think what is? Not, no, I'm giving you the best compliment I give somebody. I think you're funny. Uh, uh, I think yeah. you're witty. I think you're perfect for it. Uh, I appreciate it. We're yeah. having we're having a swell time. Marty. Are you having fun? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's it's cool. Um, <laughs> the thing about doing a, a show with Regis is you find out very quickly what the threshold is of what he do, what he will do, what he won't do. Uh -huh. He won't rehearse. <laughs> now he's yeah. over that. No, <laughs> I mean his. He told us his schedule when he was on that Regis and Kelly show. <laughs> Listen to this. This is uh, this is what I remember. Now I was I was amazed by this. He lived across the street from the studio. Right. Right? <laughs> He'd get up at 8.30, walk over there at 9, do the show at 10, be back at home at 10.30. That was right, yeah, his yeah. schedule every right. day. Yeah. And then we start this new show, and they're like, hey, Regis, you got to show up 11. So the show don't happen till 5. I'm not <laughs> so well, do you guys do Regis. a lot of pre-scripted stuff? Or is it no, no, it's just a lot of rehearsal. Because, oh, because um Myself and the uh, the guy from the Wall Street Journal, Jason Gay, uh -huh. are really the sports guys. And the other well, two. I know Jason. Yeah, 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 the other two. He's, matter of fact, I told him I was doing a show, and he said, I did a piece on it. He Earth. did. He did. He wrote yeah. an article about me. Yeah. And, and look, and the, and the comedian on the show, Michael Costa, said, I wonder if he's going to remember you. And Jason was like, he won't remember a thing. So it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be interesting when I go back. When I go back. <laughs> he said, Jason was like, he will not remember who I am. So I want to go say it today. That I is, that is amazing. Jason. I remember Jason. That is amazing. That is unbelievable. <laughs> well, you, you're going to make his day. I'm a pro at this. Uh, so someone should have told Regis, though, that it's like, like yeah. we got to rehearse. Re no. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, he goes to rehearsal, and he gets in a bad mood. I'm sure. So I mean, the man's 111. I told, listen, I told the producers, I was like, look, you can't make him come to rehearsal not, because he, he hates this. <laughs> so he stopped he coming to rehearsal. He doesn't the money. Like, what do you want? Just get out of the house? I, 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 you know, I, I think it's that he just loves being on television. Right. You know what I mean? He loves, and he likes all he of us. He wants to be relevant. Yeah, and not, I think he's relevant wherever he goes. The man draws a crowd now. Yeah. Let me tell you. People love he, him. People love him. Right. So I think that's part of it. And, and when he winds up... Um, doing the show is kind of like we don't know where he's going go to go to go half the time <laughs> mm -hmm. so the first first 10 minutes they give him 10 minutes to do whatever he wants and we're just like hey everybody hold hands <laughs> let's see let's it's see where like this this, this ride takes us you know what i mean it's, it's funny it's great man it's great and all he wants to talk about is notre dame and the yankees yeah and the yankees stink you yeah. know what i mean and it's yeah, breaking well, his the, heart the yankees version of stinking that's absolutely true. <laughs> and also let's talk some a lot does he know a lot about football other than just like the common guy thing no you know, I, I, right? he, he does actually funny he does? enough he doesn't know you know he asked the right question he, he'll uh, ask myself or as Jason, if he doesn't understand something, you know what I mean? He'll be like, okay, so why is this this way and why is it this way? Right. And, and basically the first 20 minutes of the show is Jason and myself telling him what to think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quite honestly, it really is because he because he he's kind of like, okay, I need the information. Tell me, tell me what. And he's right. like, okay, what do you think? And then and Jason then he can and roll, I, and he can roll then with he that. can roll with yeah. it after that. Yeah, and then, but good. I tell you what, the thing you the thing I've learned about readers, and this is how you stay in the TV business a long time. Once you find once you find that button, yeah. he will go back to that button. No matter where we are in the show, right. he will go right back to the first thing he said. So, yeah, why wasn't I invited out to dinner? I'm like, Regis, that was 45 <laughs> minutes yeah. ago, yeah. and you're still on that, and people love it. He knows how to call back. To oh, the call my back. God. Yeah, right, once he, right. once he know, finds a sucker. Yeah, that, that <laughs> you telling that little story reminds me of the last time that I saw you. Right. And it was up at ESPN. Oh, and it what was, a mess. It was after you. <laughs> yeah. What a it was, it was you were considering like maybe I'll come back. Yeah. I don't really want to play anymore. Yeah. You know I'm yeah. old now and I just <laughs> want to hang it up. But I don't know if I want to do the TV thing. Right. Or not. Like what what was the tipping point? What what brought um, you into this realm? You know what it was. Um, what happened was after I retired, the year after, you know, I, my agents saw all of a sudden he starts calling me again. He's like, Hey, listen, the Raiders 
want to want to see you. Oh, wow. And I'm always up for a free the trip. The Raiders, to, really? That's not the only one. I'm going to keep going. So the Raiders <laughs> call, and they're like, hey, come. And Hugh Jackson was the head coach, and he was uh-huh. the coach in Baltimore. He's like, hey, let's, let me want to check you out and see it. I was home bored out of my mind. I was like, sure, I'll fly to Oakland for a day. What the hell? And, and, and when I looked at my ticket, there was two flights on it, right? So I'm like, oh, I, I didn't look at it enough. I was kind of like, oh, it's two flights. I must be going and coming back. Yeah. I get to the airport in the Oakland. They pick me up, and they're like, where's the rest of your bags? I'm like, rest of what bags? <laughs> I brought a laptop. I'm <laughs> taking my ass home later on. They, I get to the facility. They're like, hey, let's go work out, see if we still got it. So I put on my stuff. I go jog a little bit. They're like, hey, we're still good. So you're playing Sunday. No, the hell I'm not. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, really? I, oh, yes, absolutely. One of the guys that gotten hurt. Like, you're playing. I no said, no. Kidding. It's like, yeah, we're, we're, you got to play Sunday. I'm not uh, playing no football and Sunday. you had no idea? No clue. Oh, my God. No <laughs> clue. And my agent, you know, being the guy that he is, is like, yeah. well, let's just see. No, let's not see nothing. I'm not playing no football. <laughs> so I talk, I talk my way out of Oakland. That's hilarious. I was there. This is not, I'm not kidding. I was there the day <laughs> Al Davis died. No. Oh, wow. Yeah. Apparently, and this is what my agent tells me, and again, I don't know if he's telling me the truth. <laughs> I was the last person he saw in film. And then the guy passed away. I'm not kidding. He said, I was the last person. And he was like, we got to get Trevor. And they went to his hotel, and they never saw him again. You killed him. I don't know if that's good or bad. (laughs) Right. But um, I think it was time. Yeah, but but then uh, the Patriots called, and I went and saw Bill Belichick. Oh, wow. And I was like, they, they really want to sign me. So you met with Belichick? Yeah, I saw him. I yeah. talked to him. I talked to him for a little bit. I talked to the D-line coach, and they were like, hey, you think you still got it? And I was like, yeah, nah, I'm going to go home. Really? <laughs> you know, I just want a free trip. Were they you know? probing Enough. you for Jets inside oh, school? you'd be so shocked. The thing about the Patriots is I learned very quickly, they all act like him. And I mean down to, like, the, the lower-rung graduate They're assistant like kids. Belichick? Yes, they all <laughs> act like him. I mean, all of them to a T, they talk like him. Very, you know what I mean? Really? Very, it's, like it's, 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 it's very, very weird. And on my way back, <laughs> on my way back to the airport with the kid, you know, that every team has like the young kid that, you know, just kind of shepherds you around and yeah, things like, like that. Yeah, like the gopher. Yeah, yeah. A gopher. He was like, d- like debriefing me. So the Jets, what do you? Uh, how oh, do wow. they do this? And I'm like giving a call with the trade secrets, and I get out of the car. I was like, oh my god, I just got used, <laughs> and I felt terrible. You got used by yeah, the it tiny was, it was Belichick. Yeah. Well, you know, Belichick likes to get a, a step up on Is someone. I, anything he like, he wants to know the practice schedule and this, and I'm sure Man, everything that's I said. What and a I'm sure they were taping I said, you. Yeah, do nothing. <laughs> they were taking me do nothing. You know uh, what I mean? So it was. How competitive, man! What a like almost nutty level of it. It is. It is. I've never seen anything like it. And like when when you went to work out, you couldn't go to certain parts of the facility. They wouldn't let you see stuff. And I was like, wow. I was like, it's nothing I haven't no, seen before. It's football. Let's you know calm what I mean? Down. Unless there's like five like clones of Tom Brady or something <laughs> somewhere. I don't know. What you about know? your old uh, your old team, man? They're kicking some asses. Which you know? one? Broncos. <laughs> Michigan. The Broncos. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, the Broncos. Uh, you know what? The thing about Michigan. Peyton Manning, yeah, right. <laughs> the, uh, the thing about Peyton Manning, I think at this point is he, and, and it's said about him so many times, he's a coach in the field. But besides that, the game seems to move so slow oh, to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's the mark of a good it's, player to me. It's crazy, you know. The the Raiders this year. I don't know if you you care at all about the Raiders, but I do. Right. For whatever reason, uh, they they. They've got sacks coming from the secondary. I mean, they've been right. catting, they've right. been safety blitzing, the, right. you know, to till the cows come home. And why would you even try to do that against Peyton Manning? That's and, the thing. And he sees everything. That's the thing. Before that, it happens. So all thing. you're doing is crippling oh, you're your crippling coverage. Yourself. That's all. And, and really, pointlessly crippling your coverage. And, and, and when and when Charles Woodson did that in the game, Charles Woodson is playing corner. He's like this, and Peyton Manning's like, and he's looking at Peyton Manning like, here I come. And <laughs> yeah. Peyton Manning's like, really? I mean, honestly, you're going to tell mm-hmm. me this is happening? You know what I mean? You know, yeah, you know what you I really think? You can't You, can't you know what I think hat. Peyton Manning would be great at? Even as good as he a a defensive coordinator. Yeah, I'm I think sure he'd be a great on defensive any coaching, coordinator. I'll, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll ask a stupid fan question, like a scenario. Who, do you, like, who would you want to be your quarterback? Uh, in crunch time, all in their prime. Elway, Peyton Manning, or, or Tom Brady? I had Elway. I know. Man, I had I'm saying so. Yeah. I mean, uh, so let's <laughs> and between the other two, two guys. And and you, had, no, you had him the last two years. You're right. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would go with Elway. Elway. Because I've prime. seen it. Because yeah, I've seen yeah, it. Yeah. Not even his prime. As an old man. As an old man. As an old man. As a 38 year old man, I think. Because I was tough. I saw it. How did they. I mean. Peyton's 38, 
now. Right. right. And is he that old? No, he's 37. He oh, wow. He's one year younger than me. Yeah. Well, he he's came out there. the same year as I did. Right. Trevor and I came into Michigan the same year. Did you right. do that, right? right. Yeah. No. Trevor uh, was, side fact. And Trevor our was 245 class, pounds. Our entire class left. <laughs> All no, 25 no, of us. No, no, they didn't. Yes. Rob Sweat stayed. One guy. One Zach guy. Adamy. A, Zach Adamy. Stayed. Two guys. Two guys. All right. Two, three. <laughs> ben Huff. <laughs> four guys. Glenn Steele, Joe Reese. <laughs> no. Joe, Joe left. Reese left. Yes, so there's four, four. guys. <laughs> so Michigan Ryan size. Greasy. Five guys. He was in our class. Yeah, he was. He's a walk-on. No. I don't count him. Oh, uh, well. He... So, anyway, so 25 <laughs> freshmen came in. Yeah. 20 of us left. Yeah. Wow. Four got true. kicked out. It oh, was my a bad, God. It was a bad, bad time deal. in Michigan. It sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, the way stuff was. should be. That's the way stuff was in the 70s. They had this big eat? slogan on the wall, those who stay will be champions. Those who leave will go to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got two rings. You played in two bowls. Right. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. those who leave uh, play pro football. <laughs> wow, so you take Elway over Peyton, man. Even in his pro, well, I mean, if he played with Elway, it's. I mean, look, it's hard to argue against John Elway. Ever. It's, yeah. it's hard to argue against any of them. Yeah. To tell you the yeah. truth, right. you know what I mean. That's. I don't that's know. I the, think Brady's like a Montana. This is. I love Montana too, but within a system, and that coach, he plays amazing. But I, I understand that, but I, I have a problem with a quarterback that talks tough and then lives in a house like he lives. I know. You know what I mean? There's something <laughs> really. There yeah. is a disconnect there that, Listen, a that you're trying. Like Giselle Boonshaw. Oh, my God. His <laughs> wife's a billionaire. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And That's what people forget. She's the money maker. She's the money. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? He's another football player. Yeah. She's where all the money is. And it's, I have, a, I think, I couldn't look at him the same way. He's kind of like, hey, get your ass in gear. I'm like, shut up, man. It is. You know I, what I mean? I feel it, the same way. It, it kind of like, you cannot, you cannot, uh, Talk to me on that level when you are somewhere else completely. John Elway had a big house. John Elway lived a great life. But John Elway was not married to a supermodel billionaire. He took yeah. it to another level. I mean, Tom he Brady, is, to he's whole, Hollywood. He's you know, Hollywood. He is Hollywood. When, yeah, when Hollywood. you make that comparison between those three guys, though, don't you think that defenses that Elway was facing were nothing like what's going on now? But I also think he played against better players, better natural players. There was no better football player than Derek Thomas. Um, every, I, every, I had to try to block him. Football. I know. Uh, right. He had seven sacks against my team. <laughs> the right. outside linebacker for the yes. team. Oh, and they were like, John, were you, were you chipping on Derek Thomas? Yes. <laughs> Is that for that's the best, best football player you ever saw, Derek Thomas? Ever in life. Really? Yeah. And, and, I mean, and I mean, before he died, he was he had a bare gut. And yeah. he would just kind of just saunter out there, like, "Oh, look at there! Oh my God, look at there, Thomas!" <laughs> well, he really you know was that I mean? first generation influenced by LT. I, I'm telling and you, like he was part of that guy. So that, I, right. there has never been a football. I, there has not been a football player like him, and there, I don't think there ever will be. Wow. Yeah, See, I love hearing you guys give your opinion on stuff like that because the average fan probably would never bring up. They know he's a great, great player. Yeah. But the you best you player. had to see him. Well, you had to see him live. Like yeah. Most football players, like people. People don't realize how good Ray Lewis is until right. you play against him. Because you oh, see uh, how you're on the field, you see how fast you're the they are. You're, you're, yeah. All of them, yeah. all, I mean, everybody to an extent. But then, you, then you see certain guys. You're like, oh, he's not that good. Oh my God, he's. That <laughs> good. You know. Well, when you would put Ray Lewis on the when, when you would watch the tape, you know, I'm talking back in 2000. You right. know, Ray Lewis, it just looked different. You know, I was you're used <laughs> to watching the sideline, the and the end zone copy, and uh, you're watching the linebackers. And you'd put Ray Lewis on, and it was just completely different. I right. mean, he was hitting people harder. He was moving faster. <laughs> he was covering sideline right. to sideline right. like no one else could. Well, there was a great tape. And he was, was like a, stout. There was a bootleg just, tape that went around of Lawrence Taylor's first play from scrimmage uh, against the Eagles in 81. And the giant announcer for the radio, this guy Jim Gordon, who <laughs> I think liked to pop a few before the game. Uh, he would always make mistakes and stuff. But Taylor went... Uh, the, the old running back, Wilbert Montgomery. Oh, yeah. It was a handoff to the other side. Wilbert Montgomery was an assistant coach for the Ravens. Oh, he yeah. was? Yeah. yeah. yeah well, Great running back. And and he went the other way to the opposite side of Taylor, and Taylor came from across the field. No one had ever seen it done before. <laughs> Jim, Gordon, Jim Gordon was like, okay, uh, uh, first and first and 10 from the 25. Uh, the Eagles have the ball. <laughs> handoff Montgomery, and whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's literally the sound. Stop. Stop. You know, whoa. I, I believe Lawrence Taylor came from the other side. <laughs> Hey. It is a loss of two. Yeah. I saw the same he thing. He just goes, whoa. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. 
I saw the same thing when Javon curses rookie year. Yeah, he's when we were watching, he's another oh. guy. When you put the film on, you're just like, yeah, I oh remember my it. Lord, yeah. how did that just happen? Yeah. I've never seen a guy pursuing 70 yards downfield I, and catching the wide out from the I opposite saw him, I saw him do it at the Pro Bowl. Javon he Kirk. caught he caught Mike Alstott as he was about to run into the end zone. 50 yards away. Wow. I mean, we just yeah. all rolled on the ground. Like, whatever. Yeah. He gets up full speed sprint. Yeah. Like, right. That, yeah, the whole a generation of guys that Taylor sort of influenced. He would come from a, that chop thing he used to yeah. do from the back. Yeah, and all of them. It, everybody does it. Yeah. Do you think a guy like Derek Thomas played to his full potential even? Or, 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 or Like I said, I've seen him my own eyes. If, 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 there was, if he could do any more than he did, the man, <laughs> the man should have been stopping bank robberies. That's how... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Seriously. Maybe he should have just been a superhero. Yeah, hero. really. If he could do it, like, like, man, I, I mean, he well, he would do stuff against against Elway and against Gary Zimmerman and offensive tackles, and I he would do the same thing. He's a prototypical yeah outside backer. Him right. and Lawrence Taylor, you right. know what I mean. Terrell Suggs is my homeboy, and he's he's very amazing, very good. Right, right. But he's not quite Derek Thomas, and he'll tell you that. Well, yeah. Ron, Ron Jaworski has a, uh, is, it tells a great story um, where, um, you know, Taylor heard him. He was out for like four games, and they came back, and they were playing the Giants again. And the new <laughs> offensive coordinator, something for the Eagles, was like making out the play. And he <laughs> says to him, and, and, and Jaworski says to him, well, who's covering, uh, who's, who's, who's blocking Lawrence Taylor? <laughs> and the guy goes, oh, the halfback. And he goes, well, what was that? <laughs> and he goes, oh, the halfback. And he goes, he goes, oh, he goes oh, no, he's not. He goes, no, oh, it'll be fine. He goes, the first play, like, Taylor pushed the guy into him. <laughs> That's when he jumped over the guy. <laughs> he went around the guy and grabbed him. But it just, yeah. Jaworski was real funny. He goes, well, who's, who's by him? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys really, Fantastic. if you change a game that much, you go, well, what are we going to do? Put more guys on the field. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, I had the same. Three to block them. Same exact. Going back to Javon Curse. I had the Derek Thomas experience. Was he on the Titans? Who was he? The Titans? He played for the Titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, this was outside his, linebacker, too. Same yeah, thing. He was defensive end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this was his rookie year. We were playing the Titans on Thursday night in Tennessee and the first you know we do the first 15 scripted the first play was Q8 which is sprint right option which meant that I was offset and I was supposed to chop Javon right. Kirst right <laughs> and I as soon as it went in there I'm uh, all night I'm thinking <laughs> how the hell am I gonna chop Javon Kirst he knows I'm offset he knows, he knows I'm cheating yeah, right. up he knows it's coming right. he can jump over me when I'm standing up <laughs> right like there's no way I'm gonna get it so the very first play from scrimmage live national audience I go to chop Javon Kirst I really didn't want to do this <laughs> he he, com he completely hurdled me while he was hurdling me Need me in the hip flexor, <laughs> oh, just man. like tearing my hip just flexor. Just take that. Jumped around me, ripped uh, Rich Gannon to the ground. I'm a crumpled in a heap, hurt on the ground, and he has a sack on the on the opening play from scrimmage. Uh, and I knew uh, it. I played that fun, over and over in my mind. It's going to happen. That was going to happen. Fun, fun and fact. And it did. He was a um, safety in college. Oh, wow. He was a and DB. he became a defensive end? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh that's God. what I'm saying. That, so, therefore, that's scary. Yeah. That's he scary. Just, he, he, no, he, he got a little wider. Yeah, he, got wider. he was a six foot four, 210 pound well, that's safety. Well, like, that's like Trevor. When Trevor came into Michigan, he was an outside linebacker. Right. Oh, 200, yeah. what were you, 240? 235. 235. You, I mean, you realize now he's 305 pounds. <laughs> this, imagine the same oh, size of Trevor. Right. Like when you see Trevor now, my it reminds tight. you that, pe that people in the NFL are huge. Yeah, yeah well, Trevor yeah. I, I, I stripped was, uh, 70 yeah. pounds off of this guy, and yeah. it just looks weird. I look, I look it looks like, like you I drew like a stick right figure. This is me. Yeah. <laughs> look at Trevor go down the field. Yeah, but but Trevor Trevor was uh, our starting outside backer who uh, – Yay, Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, Trevor and I both played as as true freshmen, mm -hmm. and Pierre Cooper. Yeah, a bunch of us. Yeah, we had um, a good class. We had yeah, good class. Oh, yeah, right. And we yeah. all and left. <laughs> and we all like got kicked. Yeah. yeah. By Y'all the way, that by. reminds me. Someone's uh, Justin Tuck is being done an incredible disservice right now. There's a there's a commercial currently out where a young kid is wearing number 91, and he tells his father, "When I meet him, I'm going to ask him this question." He clearly is going to meet Justin Tuck. Right. But I guess for whatever. Um, 
contract reasons or something, they couldn't actually get Justin Tuck for the commercial. Really? So, I mean, the kid actually, meet, yeah, I don't I have no idea why they did this, but when they actually meet, when you actually see Justin Tuck in the commercial, it's a shot of him with his helmet from about 20 feet away <laughs> saying hi to the kid, and Justin Tuck is like, there's not an ounce of fat on the guy. Yeah. It looks like me in a giant. <laughs> I don't know who they you got are, to play Justin Tuck. Uh, it's uh, this big fat guy. <laughs> and he's like, I was ready to just whine. And he goes, hey, son, like some stupid voice over. And then he waddles off like this. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah. Maybe you can find that on, try to find listen, that online. When listen, you see the guy, it's there's a, uh, in, in my last last couple years right what would happen is we'd always have picture day on uh a, like a day before the off week yeah. or a day after the off week so there were always some knucklehead to miss the picture right but we have to get somebody somebody's got in the the uniform. Yeah. somebody's gonna put uniform and we photoshop his yeah. face in yeah oh and they always pick the worst <laughs> built yeah oh my god well that's yeah. why maybe you know what the, if you can find this online you'll laugh your ass listen, off. listen you ever see you ever see the football pants with pockets that's how they look <laughs> yeah but they put like the side side guy you know what i mean like the gopher guy in the pants and he walks yeah. up there, and he's like, right. and he's just like, I got to do it. And we just, I we mean, would. it tickles us to but death. But even the voiceover is funny. He goes, uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Tucker. He's like, okay, son. <laughs> <laughs> we got to we gotta take a break. All right. <laughs> I got to take a break. Come back with Trevor Price after these words. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.